Today we've got a two lens review. We've got a 16 millimeter and a 75 millimeter F 1.2 from Sure. This is a sniper series review. They actually come in a set here. You can buy them individually, but in this case, I've been sent them from Sure as a set. They actually come in a little soft case here, which is kind of a nice touch, but you can also buy these lenses individually if you so choose. Kind of a nice little uh, range here, 16 millimeter, which is a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent, and a 75 millimeter, which is about 113 millimeters. So you can shoot pretty much just about everything with these two lenses. I'm reviewing them on Sony E-mount, but they also are available for Nikon as well as Fuji. So let's dive in here. Here's some specs of these two lenses, and let's quickly talk a bit about the build. These are probably gonna be tailored toward beginners, and the price point is just right in that regard. The build is decent. It's a plasticky feeling construction, definitely not premium feeling, but it's gonna get the job done. Now, some things to note, there are absolutely no buttons or switches whatsoever on these lenses. No aperture ring, no automatic manual focus button or switch, no nothing. So bare bones basic, and that is consistent throughout the line, and that's gonna help to keep costs down for sure. All you've got in this case is a focus ring that turns actually pretty nicely. It's electronically coupled and we'll get into more of the performance of this and the autofocus and everything uh, in a little bit here. Now here on the 16 millimeter, you've got 58 millimeter filter threads and on the back of both lenses, you will find a metal mount, but no little gasket for confidence when it comes to weather sealing. So in heavy rain or humid conditions, I might be a little bit wary of taking these lenses uh, into some moisture. So on the 75 millimeter here, it is a little bit wider, a little bit heavier. Uh, on the front, you've got just a little bit uh, bigger 67 millimeter filter threads, a nice big front element there. And on the back again, you've got a metal mount with an absence of the weather ceiling. So other than that, they both again have no buttons or switches, pretty basic, pretty much exactly what you're looking for if you're probably just getting started or uh, if you're looking for a bare bones lens, well, you got it. So let's dive into the performance of these two lenses. They are autofocus lenses and they actually perform pretty decently. There is the odd hiccup here and there, but for what they are, I think they perform pretty, pretty well. Now stopped all the way down to an incredibly fast and shallow F1.2. They can struggle a little bit, but you're gonna be able to get away whether you're shooting photos or videos pretty decently with both of these guys. Here's some of my favorite shots to date. Let me know what you think. Probably the best aspects of these lenses are their incredibly fast f1.2 aperture. This is going to give you great low light performance and some beautiful out of focus backgrounds and transitions. The 75mm has an incredible 15 aperture blades and the 16mm has 13. Colors can be a little bit washed out but are nice and vibrant in the right conditions. We'll have a more detailed look at the sharpness of these lenses in a second, but in terms of overall character and quality, considering the price I feel they're pretty good. One aspect where these lenses could be improved is their minimum focus distance. They do struggle a little bit, especially the 75 millimeter coming in at just under 28 inches before you can nail focus on something close to you. Not a total deal breaker, but just something to be aware of. Now, a few things to note, and given the price, these are relatively unsurprising. The flare control with both of these lenses isn't the greatest. It's gonna be most noticeable on the 75 millimeter. So if you're shooting towards the sun, or if the sun's anywhere coming into your lens, you're gonna get some pretty outrageous flare. The 16 millimeter, it's a little bit better controlled, but a good aspect of both of these lenses is the focus breathing. It's decently controlled, so if you are a video shooter and you are concerned with focus breathing, just know that these perform decently. And here's a quick look at the sharpness of these two lenses, starting with the 16 millimeter wide open at f1.2. The center of the image is nothing special, not the greatest. And as we stop down, we can see that it degrades quite quickly here, moving into the extreme corners. And it's not a great performance, but definitely nothing too, too bad. And being a budget lens at f1.2, I would expect this to be probably a little bit worse. So nothing too bad. Something to note here though, that there is very heavy vignetting here at f1.2, while the distortion remains quite well controlled in this lens. Stopping down to f1.8, you can see that vignetting does improve a heck of a lot, as well as sharpness overall. Now we can continue to stop down this time to f2.8, where we get a pretty good image across the board here. Now overall contrast is decent, stopping down, f4 here looking pretty good, f5.6, 
pretty impressive here now across the frame down to f8 and this is going to continue all the way down to about f11 here where we can see a nice bright and relatively detailed image down to f16 which is our minimum aperture which does show signs of degradation and this is going to be our minimum aperture at this point Overall for the 16 millimeters, aside from f1.2 wide open, this lens is decently sharp for what it is. And here's a look at the 75 millimeter wide open at f1.2. We can see a little bit of distortion here, nothing to write home about whatsoever. The center of the image is actually pretty decent. And moving into the corners that you can see it's quite a bit better of a performance than the 16 millimeters, considerably. So the very corners are actually pretty decent for me and for 1.2 and a budget lens, not too bad at all. Stopping down to f1.8, we can see that there isn't very much vignetting to speak of at all, and there is a little bit of an improvement in sharpness, but nothing too crazy. Now, stopping down to f2.8, we can see, yep, still a little bit of detail popping out there, and stopping down further to f4, we can see a really nice image starting to emerge. Down to f5.6 here, it does brighten up, and we can see everything's pretty much as sharp as we could want. Stopping down further to f8, looking great. Again, all the way down to f11, no complaints. And then our minimum aperture once again is going to be f16. And in terms of performance at f16 here, no real loss of degradation or quality. Optically, I'd say this one is the better of the two and no deal breakers here. Let's quickly touch on the value and the price of these two. You can actually pick these as a setup right now for about $5.99 USD, which in my opinion is very, very good in terms of value. Now they're fast F1.2s, which you really aren't gonna see very often, definitely not in this price range. So in terms of value, these things for $5.99, I think is a pretty darn good deal. Definitely keep an eye out for sales nonetheless. And if I can swing it, I will drop a promo code or maybe a discount code down in the description. So overall, I think these two new additions to Suray's sniper line are gonna be a pretty decent hit, especially if you're a beginner looking for a ton of value and some incredibly fast and versatile lenses. So let's leave it at that, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanted to pick these lenses up, I will drop affiliate links down in the description. Hope you liked this video and it helped you out. And if it did, hit that like and subscribe button, join the community, and like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.